Hi, my name is Erin. Um, and first, I want to thank the IFFGD and Cecile for inviting me to speak today. Um, this is my patient story. All right, so um, before I begin, I want to um, say to any of the patients listening or watching today that my story is not meant to be a roadmap to a cure. Um, and actually, I've been somewhat hesitant to share my story lately. Um, I've met a lot of people. I've uh, spoken to a lot of people who over the last 10 years have been dramatically affected by their functional GI disorder. Some of whose symptoms have improved, some who have lived um, every day not knowing how they're going to cope, and some people who have found success through the change in their diet, a uh, change in medication or other therapy. I think the one thing that we share together is frustration. Frustration with the medical system, with medical professionals, frustration with those who have found an answer um, that doesn't seem to work for all of us. Uh, when, and what I've learned is, and I hope that you'll see through my story, is that you should never give up, never stop trying, um, and keep an open mind. The Rome Foundation created a list of functional GI disorders, and I've learned that each person's symptoms and the perception of their symptoms is unique. Uh, so, nevertheless, this is my story. My name is Erin, and I think I was born with a stomach ache. My mom will help happily tell strangers, if you come to our house, that I was constipated since the age of two, and that she would chase me around the living room trying to administer medication. Sit there long enough and she'll tell you about how I made her late for work at least twice a week uh, when I was in elementary school because I was stuck in the bathroom, <laughs> constipated. And I often had a stomach ache at school and I would miss math class, maybe sometimes on purpose, uh, because I was in the bathroom and my bowels were spasming. Uh, but to be honest with you, I never thought of it as a chronic problem. It was just me. Um, then one day in uh, July of 2004, my mom and I had just spent a day at the beach and we had come home and I had a stomach, a horrible stomach ache, horrible. I was 17 years old. My dad had died the year before. I had just started my first job and I was deep in the stress of applying to college. I visited my primary care doctor who said, it's just stress, uh, but she didn't give me any help. She didn't give me any way to cope with the stress, any tools to use, anyone to talk to, uh, just it's stress. So, all right. I spent that first evening watching MTV, I'm 17 years old, and I was wishing my horrible stomach ache would go away. And in the morning, it was gone. But every day it came back again and again. It was an indescribable pain, like a burning, a sour, twisting pain. School started that September, and I found that I was eating less and less. I was uh, eating less and less to try to control the pain. Uh, I cut out dairy. I cut out fibrous foods, I cut out sweets, I cut out fried foods, and I was down to egg whites and rice cakes uh, when I visited my first GI doctor. I was a little under 17 years, or under 18 years old, and I had already lost 15 pounds. GERD, he said, and he gave me some pills, and so I asked, but what should I eat? And he shrugged and said, anything you want. The pills seemed to work for a while, and I tried to eat more, uh, but that only lasted a short time. I was becoming more nauseous, more depressed. I, I went to my second GI doctor, and he, said, he did some tests, uh, upper GI, uh, a barium swallow, a CT. Everything was normal. He gave me some pills that I was that was supposed to stop the spasming. And he told me I, I was probably lactose intolerant. Although I had no diarrhea, 
I had no gas or bloating, uh, and I hadn't touched dairy products in more than six months. And he told me that I also probably had IBS, but didn't really give me any further explanation. So I asked him, but what do I eat? So he said with a smile, anything you want. Hmm. I lost another five pounds and now I was 114 pounds before I left for college that fall. I went to school with a prescription for hyoscyamine and hoped that one day this nightmare would end, uh, but every day I woke up in pain. I walked through campus in pain and I sat through class hoping that the pain would go away. I had chosen pharmacy school. I wanted to become a pharmacist and figure out what kind of medication I needed to make this pain go away. That was my goal. However, every day I could feel myself getting weaker. I was surviving on about 20 foods at that point, doing my best to figure out what was causing these symptoms. This twisting, burning pain that was radiating from my belly button in all directions. In the beginning of my sophomore year, I decided that becoming a pharmacist wasn't the answer. I would never survive the six years <laughs> that it would take to find the magic pill. That battle against food was daily, so I changed my major, I changed universities, I changed states, and I ended up going to Penn State University to major in nutritional science and become a dietitian. Um, so for the non-dietitians listening out there, <laughs> you have to get a, right now, your bachelor's in science or bachelor's in nutrition, um, and then spend a year uh, going into an internship. Uh, you have to get matched, just like a doctor, to get into an internship, and then you have to uh, take an exam, a national exam, to become a registered dietitian. So keep that in mind. All right. Um, I studied all the textbooks. Uh, was it fiber? Was it sugar? Was it a defect in my anatomy and physiology? I visited my third GI doctor between my sophomore and junior year of college. She did a colonoscopy. Everything was normal. I asked her, but well, what do I eat? And she shrugged. Avoid broccoli. I was 110 pounds. By my senior year of college studying nutrition, I had to strategize how I was gonna make it to class and what I would eat. I was now down to five or six foods. And after I ate, I couldn't leave my room for at least two hours because the pain was excruciating. I was malnourished and I was suicidal. Depression had taken over. I thought about dying every day, and I know this isn't a particularly welcome subject, but I bring it up because I want any pr practitioners listening out there to understand that the disorder might be invisible, but the pain is real. And that whether you believe depression and anxiety caused my GI symptoms or whether my GI symptoms caused my depression and anxiety, to me, it never mattered. Because I was 21 years old and barely functioning. I graduated with my bachelor's in nutritional science in May of 2009, and that's when things fell apart. I didn't get into my dietetic internship. Remember, you need that to be a dietitian. And I no longer had, had school to focus on. I found myself in bed daily in pain, taking old hydrocodone pills that, that were left over from getting my wisdom teeth out. Uh, several years ago. Um, and as you can see from my slide, I have no pictures of my graduation. Because who needs pictures when you don't think you're going to survive much longer? Um, now I was 100 pounds. Um, that was it. My fourth GI doctor. My last GI doctor. My mom and I traveled seven hours from the suburbs of Philadelphia to Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and this time it was different. This doctor listened, actually listened to my symptoms. I didn't have GERD. <laughs> I did have IBS with constipation, as we can tell from when I was two years old, um, but that wasn't causing the excruciating pain. 
I actually had uh, functional abdominal pain syndrome and IBSC and years of pain and years of doctors not recognizing the problem had made it worse. He started me on medication and then a month later on a second medication and the pain was quickly reduced. I could sleep again, I could eat again, but the damage had been done and I was scared to eat anything new. I was scared to walk into restaurants. I also had a four month course of cognitive behavioral therapy to get through my fear of eating again. Uh, and I had visited an excellent psychologist. And a year after I visited my fourth GI doctor, I was sitting in the cafeteria eating with my preceptors in my dietetic internship. Look how skinny I was. <laughs> and I was volunteering with the IFFGD. I was standing outside the Today Show looking like a crazy lady with a big poster and a, and a flower hat. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> and today, 10 years later, I work in a community hospital in Florida and I see patients who are struggling just like I did. Maybe not with the exact symptoms, but with the same anxiety and doubt that things will ever get better. And that's what I wanna share with you. That's what I want my story to be about. So often patients and practitioners feel like they're locked in a battle against each other. And as we talk here today, I hope that through our Norton education series, just like Bill and Nancy did 30 years ago, we strive to learn more about the patient perspective. Thank you.